So let's go through some of the basics. What are circadian rhythms? Circadian rhythms are biological rhythms inside your body that are connected with the day and night cycles of the environment. Humans are diurnal creatures, which means that we're active during daytime and we sleep at night. Rats and owls are the opposite, they're nocturnal, they're active at night and sleep during the day. With these circadian patterns come distinctive physiological processes that have evolved over the course of eons. They're evolutionary adaptations of creatures living in a certain way that promoted their survival and evolution. That's why there's some genetic variance to every person's circadian code. Think of night owls and morning larks who sleep at different times. However, that difference is, in my opinion, very small and it's only going to differ maybe like an hour or two. There is no human whose natural circadian rhythm would be to be awake after midnight and sleep until noon. Those things are the result of living in a modern world with different type of circadian disruptors and lifestyle factors. Shift work, playing video games until the morning, partying throughout the night, it's unnatural and they're one of the worst things for your health. Everything's a copy of a copy of a copy. There are three main signaling factors that affect the circadian rhythms. Light, movement and food. Most of the circadian signaling is transmitted through your eyes where light enters the retinas and it gets transmitted into the brain where it stimulates the suprachiasmatic nucleus or SCN. The SCN is the master circadian clock in your body that regulates all the other biological rhythms and clocks. There are many different types of clocks and it's thought that most organs like the liver, heart and pancreas actually have their own circadian clock. That's why all these different factors like sunlight, physical exercise and eating, they affect the entire circadian rhythm of your body. So how does light affect your circadian rhythm? If you go outside into the sunshine, then you're exposed to different light frequencies coming from the sun or other artificial light sources. Light is made of many electromagnetic particles or photons that travel through space in a wavelength form. They emit energy and they're represented by different colors. Sunlight's wavelength is called the solar spectrum and it contains ultraviolet, visible and infrared wavelengths. And sunlight is going to have a different wavelength depending on the time of the day and uh, where the sun is located in correlation with the Earth's axis. The human eye can only detect visible light which is seen as either violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange or red light. Blue light exposure to the eyes plays a very important role in regulating your circadian rhythms and day and night cycles. It has antibacterial properties, boosts wakefulness, increases alertness and can adjust the circadian clock. Naturally, the most blue light would be emitted somewhere around 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. during the daytime. Too much blue light at the wrong time can damage your mitochondria, promote insulin resistance, cause insomnia, depression and increase inflammation. Naturally, you wouldn't get exposed to much blue light aside from the early to afternoon parts of the day when the sun is gonna emit shorter wavelengths. However, ever since the invention of the light bulb, our environment has many additional sources of blue light. Because of technology and new gadgets, we're getting exposed to more and more blue light for longer periods of time, which then can offset the circadian rhythm and cause damage to our health. Blue light exposure at night and circadian mismatches are linked to many types of cancer, diabetes, obesity, heart disease and Alzheimer's. You wouldn't think that it has a huge role, but after you learn about how light affects your body's biological processes, you will soon realize that it really is that serious. And, you know, thanks a lot, Thomas Edison. Thanks a lot for <laughs> giving us this artificial blue light, artificial sunshine that we can use to be productive 24-7 and, and uh, drive the productivity of our society through, through the moon. But, you know, our, this kind of enlightenment can become our detriment as well, unless we know how to control it. If you're working at night shift or you tend to stay up late all the time, then you have to seriously reconsider what time do you go to bed, what, t what type of a job you have, and what time do you wake up because it's literally killing you. Life is pointless and nothing matters and I'm always tired. That's why it's super critical for your brain and health to limit blue light exposure in the evening. If you're working long hours late in the afternoon, then you should use some blue blocking glasses to protect your eyes from too much strain. 
I'm using many different blue blockers. The most effective ones are the true dark ones that literally cover your entire eyes and they make you look like Vin Diesel from the movie The Riddick. But uh, there are also some less scary ones like blue blocks that actually look quite stylish and uh, there's something that you could wear in public. I'll leave all the links to those products in the show notes so you can check, check it out. Secondly, you should also install a software called Flux or Iris on your computer that's going to automatically match the brightness of the screen with the circadian rhythms. And on your smartphone, it's called Twilight. Sleeping in pitch black darkness with blackout blinds and a sleeping mask is also very good. And you, you also have to make sure that there are no hidden sources of blue or green light in your house, like the alarm clock, night lamps, red dots on the TV screen, smoke detector, and you know, so on. They're all gonna emit some blue light. You're not afraid of the dark, are you? When you do some research, then you're gonna find that blue light at night really is quite scary stuff and is gonna shut down melatonin production. Melatonin is the sleep hormone and it's one of the most powerful antioxidants that's gonna help to conduct many repair processes in the brain and the body. If you inhibit melatonin, then you're gonna lower growth hormone which makes it more difficult for you to burn fat and build muscle and you will also prevent the brain from clearing out the toxins that get accumulated there during the day. There are these proteins called beta amyloids that are associated with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and if you don't remove them during sleep they begin to accumulate there even more. So keep in mind that these neurodegenerative diseases they happen over the course of decades and you can begin to show the first signs of Alzheimer's 10 to 20 years already before you actually get the disease. So if you've noticed yourself having brain fog, forgetfulness or the inability to focus, then you should start taking your circadian rhythms and sleep quality a lot more seriously. And uh, I dare to say that at least 70% of modern diseases are actually rooted in circadian rhythm mismatches, not just eating too much and moving too little. Sleep is fundamental and you want to make sure that you follow a proper circadian rhythm. Body, mind, empowerment. Get stronger, faster, smarter, quicker, friendlier, more helpful, more driven. Everything the body needs. Control your mind.